So Grayling and Red Rock Creek are one of two Aboriginal populations we have left. The other one's a big whole valley. So as far as Grayling populations go, this is one of the two most important. Like a Charles Russell painting, the Centennial Valley draws you in. As magnificent as this landscape looks, its importance to the Graylings is equal to or more so, as it is one of the last remaining habitats for native Arctic grayling in the lower 48 states. This uniqueness is why Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks prioritizes managing and conserving these beautiful fish. So we're estimating abundance of spawning grayling on Red Rock Creek. And the reason we do this estimate is to help with the science that we've got in place with Red Rock Lakes National Wildlife Refuge to understand what's driving this population. Through time, what we've learned is conditions over the winter in Upper Red Rock Lake are what dictates how many fish are in the population each year. So this abundance estimate not only helped us figure that out, but it helps us start to identify ways we can fix overwinter habitat to improve viability of this grayling population over the long term. Arctic grayling requires specific habitat conditions to survive the winter. The water must be at least one meter deep and contain more than four milligrams of oxygen per liter. So when there is a harsh Montana winter, the water in lakes become more shallow and oxygen levels drop which can cause these fish to suffocate. So every fish gets a, a fin clip to get genetic variation. And then to get the kind of genetic estimate we need, we need to know how old that fish is or what year it was born. And so that's why we're taking scales to look back in time and, and assign it to a year. Inserting a visual tag near the eye is another tool for understanding and monitoring the population of Arctic grayling. Yeah, so these grayling, they run up Red Rock Creek each spring to spawn, and then when they hatch, they drift back down into the lake, and they have to live out there for two years before they come back and, and spawn again. We've had a run of bad winter since 2016 that took the grayling population from over 2,000 fish down to about 150. And so really the last two winters are the first two where we've had a little bit of habitat out there in the lake and is showing up in this year's year class. This species is a deep concern for Montana FWP, and they are continuing to strengthen and work with partners like U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services and private landowners to keep one of the last Arctic grayling's native habitats their home. For more information on Arctic grayling, please visit fwp.mt.gov.